University of Bolton Royd is a multicultural school. We have a high percentage of ethnic minority children who uh, bring with them a rich culture, but also challenges for our teachers. The children have limited experience of English when they start with us. Good EEL teaching, as all good primary teaching, should be based around children being able to see and to do and to become fully engaged in the learning. We have strong links with the mosque and we've visited the mosque uh, and looked at their teaching methods. We've talked to the mosque as well about our approaches to discipline, our positive behaviour policy and so on. So that was a nice link. But I do think we do have the confidence of our parents and that uh, makes a big difference really. Liam, how many do you think we've got? We always make sure that the curriculum links are tangible links to make sure that, that they ha have strong connections because otherwise the children won't be able to see those connections. But it does mean that in one lesson you might be covering science and ICT and geography all in one lesson. And it, I just think it's really helpful for the children in seeing that literacy and maths are not subjects on their own, but they're part of the wider, the wider world. I need to count how many seeds there are. So if I spread those out, how many seeds are there? 15. 15. The gardening club has been in school for, for a while now. I think gardening has a very calming influence. You know, it's a, it's a much slower pace than you might have in a, a maths lesson or an ICT lesson. And they know that what they do has an impact and it has an effect. If they accidentally break a stem, then that's going to damage the plant. And we instill in them that they have to respect the plants. They might be terrified of a millipede, but they'll still look after it and make sure it's OK. And I think that's why gardening is important. It's a different approach to teaching. And if you can get children outside, away from the confines of the classroom, it can give them so many different experiences and skills. Those tom little tomatoes will hopefully grow into some really big, juicy red tomatoes. Have you seen those, Nikita? The gardening club tend to drive things forward. So, for example, at the moment we're having a whole school potato competition uh, where all the classes have been given potatoes and they've got to try and grow as big an amount of potatoes as they can. Do you notice that one has got a flower? And what does that mean to Jamal if it's got a flower? It means the, uh, the potatoes are ready. It means the potatoes are ready. onto the floor. Important. Today it was all about a cross-curricular curriculum which was creative, exciting, first-hand experience for the kids so that they're motivated, they're enjoying it and when they're enjoying it they remember it so they're learning, living and learning. 10, 11. For a lot of our children it was an absolute new experience for them, something that they've not um, tried out before. So for them to have been given it from a seed, then to take to water it, taking care of it, then to see what it produces, I think they've been really excited by mm. it. Because some of them were not really sure where the you know where the potatoes were coming from. We had comments like, well where's it growing? I can't see it and mm. so they were really excited. Just check there aren't any little ones hiding under the leaves or in the roots. <laughs> 400 grams? Which class grew the most potatoes? It's the same amount. It is the same amount. So does it matter how many potatoes you grow? No. no. It doesn't really. Does it be fun? It doesn't matter how many no. you've grown because both classes were the same. The same 400 amount. grams. Using the outside as an outside classroom found that the children have been really motivated, engaged with the learning and actually really taking pride in the work and what they're doing. They're, they're really eager to please and, and excited with the work that they're producing as well. We've got our potato summer fair mm -hmm. and every single activity is to do with potatoes. Okay. And not just potatoes, but maths and potatoes. A lot of our children have been um, EAL. 
developed them socially as well, with the social schools, they're interacting, they're cooperating, they're sharing, which is actually okay. really good, uh, a really major school for our children to develop. We're predominantly lots of boys in both classes, and I think boys are very kinesthetic learners. These activities um, help them in their learning style because it is big and it's practical and it's outside and, you know, it's just more exciting for them. We're going to sort of to the biggest of balls here. And we tried to focus on it as well, making it be, um, give them a chance to discover and explore um, and be creative as well. Hi, sure. Could you count how many bags of potatoes you've bagged up? How many? Three, two, three. It was balancing. Four. Four bags, well done. So how many bags have you bagged Nine. up all together? Nine bags. How many grams are in each bag? hundred. A hundred, good boy. When you see the children out there excited, engaged, motivated, learning, I think it's, re it's really it is worth, worth it. it, isn't it? Yeah. Whoa! Did you get the one point? Can you the our stimulus today is in my bag, which is a bit unusual. Just start examining it carefully. Think about what questions I might be going to ask you. How is this going to develop? As your new friend, you are going to have to find out everything you can about that potato. Our Monday literacy lesson every week is Philosophy for Children, or P for C, as it's becoming known. We started off with the potatoes, um, which was a, quite a fun stimulus today to get the idea going, but to go beyond that. So afterwards, they were thinking about their friends, they were thinking about how you would make a friend. We talked about imaginary friends, for example, so thinking more deeply. For this one, you could, it's got all these markings here, it's got, no, it's got it in there, it's got it sticking out a bit over there. If this is a person, this could be a teenager, it's got all these spots, teenage spots. I think the surprising thing is um, the children who find it difficult to contribute and that we do find that, that they have more to say in philosophy sessions, which is good. They feel comfortable and they realise that we're not looking for an answer, so they, they can put forward their opinion and, and listen to other children as well, which is, is different from, from a lot of lessons. We have many links with outside agencies. We have links with the Focus on Food project. So, for instance, a cooking bus that comes into school, fantastic opportunity for children uh, to go on the bus with adults. And again, we've brought that into the community, so our parents have had an opportunity to go okay, on the so bus as well. Delicious. So we're going to add with this. Now, it's chopped up, but this is what it looks like. Does anybody know what this is? Do you know? Spinach. Spinach. Does it grow on bushes or does it grow below the ground or above the ground, do you think? Above the ground. It does. It grows above the ground. So it's a leafy vegetable and it just grows above. Does anybody know how many portions of fruit and vegetables you should have a day? Yeah. At least five. At least five, exactly. Focus on Food believes every child should have the right to learn how to cook. If children learn how to cook, that they're empowered to make healthy choices, informed choices about the food they eat. They'd, they don't have to rely on convenience produce. If you cook with children, if they grow their own food, they're more likely to sit down and try it. We're going to need for about another two minutes. I mean, I don't make things like this, so it must make the children want to do it as well. She likes a lot of savoury things as well as sweet stuff, and she helps a lot of cooking and stuff like that. She's taught me a lot of tips behind holding the knives and making the bridges and stuff like that. Cooking is a brilliant cross-curricular um, subject. It can be linked across the curriculum. For example, we did, if you did weighing and measuring in maths, you could practically apply that. In geography, you can discuss food miles. You can talk about climate change and how it affects crops. In history, you can you know, talk about Roman and Vikings, what they used to eat in the past. And religion is a wonderful subject to, to get children to think about other cultures, open your mind, you know, experiment with different foods and, and what um, religion celebrates. It's endless what you can do. 
this when they make something they want other people to taste a mom taste i made this one and they feel excited about this and they were everyone to appreciate and the praise that they have done something the more confident like and they feel that they can do something and help moms and they can make something for themselves so more independent not all the time they're sitting down on the sofa watching telly and say mom i'm hungry so bring me something to eat The buddying system that Elaine has run and she's developed is absolutely fantastic. I mean, she's very much committed to those children in that they shall grow up as um, children of the world, know about how to share, how to empathise with other children. She's very clever at linking children who may be really, really shy and insecure and finding another buddy that can kind of bring them on and focus on behaviour for some children. It makes a happy, safe playground for all the school. To become a buddy, you have to apply for the job, which is, is quite an adult thing. They, there's a job description, there's a job application form, parents have to give the children a reference as well. So it's just like being a grown-up, really. The benefits for the older children is it prepares them for high school, really, and also the developing friendships. So we don't have lonely children. There's always somebody who you can go to and, you know, make new friends. You've got to be a good role model. You've got to, like, um, not shout at people. you just got to ask them not to do it, don't shout. And... I wanted to be a, uh, become a buddy because I needed some more friends and I wanted something to do because I didn't have that much stuff to do. I wanted to become a buddy to uh, improve my behaviour and um, but it make some more friends. You actually see children that change overnight in behaviour attitudes, children that have sometimes probably not made the right choices about their own personal behaviours, but because they're now in a, a position, a peer, some of a role model, you actually see them literally change and, and develop. We've had a lot of children that have, you wouldn't recognise at the end of the year as to how they were at the beginning. Why do I have to? I strongly believe that children only get one chance at this and we've got to get it right. We've got to make sure the first thing is that they're happy in the learning, happy coming to school, they feel safe and secure. Our last Ofsted report, for example, quotes a child who says, we're doing exciting, enjoyable things and then we realise we're learning. And that really summed it up for me. That's what primary education should be about.